This is Greg. Hi, everyone. <laughs> and Chris, of course. Hello. All right, let's go see what we got. Yeah. And of course, we can't forget Mike. <laughs> Our handy driver mm -hmm. and friend. All right. No snow, no rain. It's a good yeah. thing. No snow, no rain, but we've got some frozen uh, something or others here. Yeah. Yes, it's definitely not summer. Woodpeckers. <laughs> frozen woodpeckers? Nice. <laughs> I like it. Should we leave our shoes here? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would probably work out good. Okay, great. We're heading down into the basement lair. Yeah, this is where the speakers came down. It uh, wasn't hard. It wasn't hard for them. Okay. So, so Greg, how did that work? So did the, the uh, delivery guys came and uh, hold them down here for you? Exactly. Actually, I'm going to, there's music on now. Let me turn That's that. Right. Okay. But I uh, know the, the load out and load in was quite easy. Okay. Um, four boxes. Uh, two of them were heavier than the other two and larger than the other two. But they muscled them down here quite easily and uh, they were easy on pack. The packaging was good and no problems. And you didn't have to haul them down yourself, so. Correct, no, yeah. that was the, uh, that, uh, so that the, was necessary in this case. So the big question, did they have white gloves on? <laughs> <laughs> uh, they were furniture movers by trade is my guess yeah. and uh, they knew how to be uh, careful and they were and uh, I don't, it's worked really well. Nice. So it's good. All right, well let's go see what we got. So here are your Maggies here. So this was yeah, this oh, is the, the older Maggies. The yeah. older ones. Which ones are these, Greg? Those are 1.7 Is, right? Correct. Okay, I didn't mean to answer no, for no, Greg no. here, but yeah. no, Chris, you're the. Oh, here we go. Look <laughs> yeah, at this. Yeah. Sweet. Looking nice. Yeah, it's a nice room. Yeah, it's dedicated to audio and a little bit of artwork, um, uh -huh. which uh, may not be anyone's taste, but uh, oh been down here for many years. This house is actually about 25 years old, which um, uh, I designed and had built, but now I ended up being a builder after that for, more, for, for reasons. But um, yeah, it's, it's uh, as I was mentioning to Chris, a basement is not all that bad in that um, uh, the signal to noise ratio is really good, meaning it's very quiet. Uh, I did whatever I can to treat the room. I made my own diffusion panels. Mm -hmm. I made my own uh, base traps. I have uh, semi-circle base traps. Made. Oh, you actually made these 3D diffusers yourself? Yeah, oh, and okay. with clear pine. And, Boy, that's uh, quite a project. MD oh, oh, God. <laughs> They're actually gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I, had, I had thought about... I, yeah, um, you're a craftsman well, I'm here. I'm very fastidious. Yeah. But it's 144 pieces times six, so oh, it's boy. almost a thousand cuts. <laughs> and um, wait a minute, uh, isn't there something about a thousand cuts? That's <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, like uh, death by a thousand needles. Oh yeah. But um, uh, it it was. Uh, I like the way they turned out, and uh, they yeah. do make a difference. And oh, oh gosh, and yeah. um, um, you had put out an article, Paul. Mm -hmm. um, not too long ago by trying to clean up the the stuff between the speakers yep. yeah. and i that gave me impetus to saying okay i got to do some things so mm -hmm. these guys have seen this system um with all of the ps audio gear in the middle mm -hmm. so what i did is took the closet tore the closet down or the doors off and so forth and refinished and put the electronics ah. which you all might be familiar with uh -huh. um in that corner. Oh, it looks great. And um, it sounds better. Mm -hmm. This was back when I had the Maggies, or I still have the Maggies, but yeah. prior to this speaker, I made that change and it sounded a lot better. I love this room. Uh, I think this is just as cozy uh, as it could possibly it's, be. It's cozy. Yeah. You know, the, the no, challenge no. with speakers um, in, in rooms, of course, is that um, a, a, there's kind of two different types of responses. You have Below a few hundred hertz with a speaker, uh, a speaker like this even, uh, it's a sphere of sound coming out. So you have uh, what's called speaker boundary interaction mm. or speaker boundary interference, um, where the sound you know, coming directly from the speaker to your listening position arrives at one point in time, mm -hmm. the sound bouncing off the wall, then arriving at the speaker, uh, the listening position arrives at a later point in time. And when you have, um, two identical signals that are arriving 
at a different point in time and combining, you get these interference notches that look like the finger of a comb, so they call it comb filter. Mm -hmm. So you, you get these, you know, a series of notches in the response. The problem you run into is that these are very close in time with one another, and the way your uh, ear brain system works is that you tend to fuse, um, you know, very close acoustic events into one sound. So there's this thing called the precedence effect or Haas effect, where you basically localization your ability to discern where the sound is coming from um, is affected by that too so you, you sort of can get a bit of a smear and also you get this coloration with the comb filtering so the, the the near wall reflections are really important like you said first reflection point but also in the base you get um, you know, the, the time delay here affects a bass note essentially in the mid bass and it, there was a uh, uh, the guys at Allison, Allison Effect they called it, where um, basically the, the bounce to the floor and the bounce to the sidewall, the bounce to the front wall, all are happen in that 100 to 300 hertz range. Mm. And um, so part of what you're doing in moving the speakers around is uh, adjusting those individual frequencies. So the one to this wall, that wall, the, you know, the floor is kind of a fixed one because the, the speaker is of a certain height. Um, and so that's a lot of what, you know, the positioning is doing in a small room. Ideally, um, you know, the sidewall would be a little further away, but we're going to work with what we got here and make the, make the best we can. But yeah, the, the, the reason why a diffuser is important is, uh, you know, when you get that comb filter, it's because it's a perfect reflection off, mm. a, off a flat wall like this. If you do what's called decorrelate the sound, so uh, the, this um, diffuser, like a 2D diffuser, for instance, scatter sound in, in a 2D plane, this does in a three, you know, in both axes, but um, you get a non-correlated reflection and then it doesn't, you know, coherently interact with the, the main sound from the speaker. So right. it, it helps, you know, that sidewall reflection not color things as much. So in general, uh, absorption on the sidewalls isn't as good of a thing in this location because um, side reflections are important for a sense of width of the sound, apparent source width, they call it. So the more you start to damp sidewall reflections, you tend to lose a sense of spaciousness and sort of width to the sound. Mm -hmm. So typically, it, you know, it used to be people would put, you know, fiberglass panels right on the first reflection point. Um, I would tend to say that's not the best place for them. It's generally more like the diffusion that you have um, because, again, that gives this sense of width. Um, I just comment on the point of uh, reflection, yeah. absorption, and so forth. Yeah. Um, we, we, it's, if you have the, the ability within a listening environment yeah. is to, yeah. to literally move stuff around, it's, yeah. a, it's a great thing. Yeah. Whether it's CDs, albums, what have you, mm -hmm. they, they are in essence you know, diffusers, and the deeper the diffuser, the be generally the better it does with you know, the lower the frequency range, which is really nice. So. Um, I'm constantly moving stuff around, so um, my guess is, based on what uh, Chris was telling me, that uh, I could pick up these <laughs> sidewall diffusers and move them out, and it actually might might work out better. What I've had noticed, and what I think is important, is that I've always been a dipole speaker fan. Mm -hmm. I've had acoustats, quads, uh, any planer out there, magna planers of different types. I even had timpani 1Ds mm. back in the old days. Um, and this is not the best environment for it, but I would try to make it work. Mm -hmm. um, what I found with the FR30, um, after using many planers in rooms like this, or even larger, that these are more um, less room critical in the sense that when I set this speaker up and moved it around, uh, it wasn't like moving it every quarter inch with a Bagna planer. Mm -hmm. um, this being a, a more of a point source speaker enabled me to focus image have better good frequency response, and um, major moves had made differences, albeit, but not as drastic as a dipolar. So um, I've always loved dipolars the way they uh, uh, sound, and um, I've always had difficulty with its imaging. This gives me the imaging that I want, and actually, I believe, much better frequency response, but we can talk about that later. <laughs> but you know, with planar magnetic drivers, uh, one of the tricks with them is to use them where they're most optimal. And in this case, it says a broadband mid. And then this is a true woofer. It's not like a subwoofer exactly. section. So it's it's operating you know, uh, from 400 hertz and down. And that's where there's a lot of um, fundamentals of vocals, kind of the heart of the vocal range, and all the you know, low bass and punch and everything. So they're doing a lot of the, the lift, heavy lifting. 
Oh, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, and the idea that the mid-range then going lower, mm -hmm. um, yeah. uh, and it, it aligns itself very well to uh, a cable manufacturer that has a yeah. different design for each low end and, yeah, and then good, one for mid and top. Yeah. And then the box is already set up. Right. The FR30 is already set up to take direct, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you had a picture, Paul, the, the terminals in the back, yeah. but there's terminals uh, on each box, which mm -hmm. enables for you to buy wire, mm -hmm. um, particularly with a mono amplifier, it's simple. Extremely yeah, simple. Yeah, it's just yeah. a simple hookup, but it enables for you to get the best of both worlds if you have a a, 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 a cable designed to um, be better in one frequency rate range versus another. This is the Iconoclast cable. It's the newest Series Two version yeah. that Galen has been developing, and it's driving the mid and top, and then the um, silver shielded cable. SPT something something I forgot what it was. Uh, cable is driving the uh, woofers on the bottom. Uh -huh. This is the copper cable without silver shielding. It's not available yet, but this is the what's available now. Oh, interesting. And it sounds really really good for those of you uh, uh, who are uh, fans uh, fans of his uh, cable and his design. Um, the new cable sounds really good on top. Sounds Excellent. Really good. Yeah, and and uh, you know we do offer a, uh, a little jumper with the speakers if you want to wire it down at the. Bottom terminals, but let's let's, uh, uh, let's just put some music on for a sec, and yeah. just I just want to hear what we got going. And, and well, why don't I pick something that you're familiar with? In fact, I've got some of your okay. Um, yeah. Oh, excellent! I was going to say I I brought all the Octave Records stuff. Okay, that's good. Yep. Definitely trapped right in the middle here. Mm -hmm. um, let's. Uh, can we? Can the chair go back just a little sure, bit? Sure. My bourbon stand here. <laughs> swap off the chairs too. Whatever you want to do. Yeah. All right. Let's. We're going to start over here. That's better. Hey, Chris. Yeah. Let's push them a little bit closer together and another couple of inches out. Uh, out yeah, from so the how wall. Much, well, so how much room do we have on this case? Essentially none. None. Maybe I can pull his his power, uh, his P20 out a little bit. Yeah, let's pull the... Yeah, that gives us more room. Yeah. See? Yeah. Well, there we go. And then we're going to come in a little bit. I'm going to let you do the in. Toe yeah. in or push in? I push can push in. from here. Yeah, I can. I'm happy to, to help here as well. Yeah, and I'm not convinced that, that putting them right closer direction. together was a good move, actually. No, no. Chris, could, would you explain to us what the boundary switch does? Yeah, so you know, it's something you don't necessarily see in a lot of hi-fi speakers. It's something you tend to see more in, in professional studio monitors and things of that nature. But basically, at low frequency, the speaker is making a sphere of sound. Mm -hmm. And um, 
every boundary, so the floor, the wall, the ceiling, starts to constrain that radiation and actually boost it, essentially. So you gain about, um, about 2 dB per boundary. So the speaker is voiced with a certain boundary condition, um, which is where the speaker goes from being a sphere of sound to then, you know, reflecting off the front baffle. It's called the baffle step, and you basically adjust those levels to flat. But if you're near a corner of a, of a room, um, sometimes there's excess mid-bass, and in that case, um, we're basically lifting the response above that to balance it out. Mm -hmm. But in, th in this room, you would think we would be getting a lot of extra mid-bass, but I'm not hearing it uh, at this point. Yeah, there might be a null. Or yeah, something and I on. think it's related to this boundary interaction we're getting. Mm -hmm. But just to be clear, when, when we get too close to a boundary, we're getting too much. Too much low mid-range and bass. Right. And you can essentially... And that's what the switch the does. The switch, yeah, can bring up the rest of everything to balance mm -hmm. it. Uh, and so it's sort of a, uh, you know, installation dependent sure. thing, but it would be Which is nice to have. Right? Right? Yeah, yeah, it just gives additional placement flexibility. There's other ways to accomplish that, but having it in the speaker is kind of the least ob ob obtrusive, yeah. you know, than doing equalization or something like yeah. that. Is it working when the, um, when the, the, mm -hmm. the near far is, is, is working regardless of the level of the, the yes. other, okay, so it's yeah. on in other words. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. There, there's basically two positions for the mid-range and treble output, and then the other switch is for um, rear tweeter only. So this, the right-hand switch oh. on, only oh. um, dictates what's coming out of the rear tweeter, so all the way to the, the left, it's off, and then we have five positions of on. And, and the, the reason why that's there is um, tweeters as the sound wavelengths get to the size of a drive unit, they start to become directional. So tweeters all start to become really directional above, you know, 8, 10 kilohertz. In the case of our tweeter, it's a little bigger than a one-inch dome. It's about an inch and a half. Mm -hmm. So it's a little more directional up above 10 kilohertz. Mm -hmm. um, and then rooms also have different amounts of absorption. So if you have a room that has, you know, heavy carpets and w other stuff, um, you, you know, you might be lacking air and kind of upper upper extension, a sense of that. So you have a, a sort of a, a, a dial to add some of that back in if you want. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. All right. Let's see what we got. Uh, thanks, Chris. Mm -hmm. Best friends of all the places all the faces I can't see Let's pull those two out of here. Yeah. Just, and just see what happens. I'll do it from the bottom. From the bottom. Just because from the bottom. I glued the okay, dowels I <laughs> on. I didn't screw them in. Okay. <laughs> yeah. These turned out great, though. Mm. I've been you a long time. Oh, that's a lot better. That just immediately brought the soundstage out. Here, you, Greg, you sit down. Let's. Uh, I'm going to start that from the beginning. Well, maybe I won't. Sounds pretty clean. Yep. Oh, uh, uh, uh. Just, just stay seated. We'll do the work. Look good. Okay. I hear the image difference, but I also hear that. Um, once those are taken away, the top end extends. This is, did yeah. you notice that too? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, well, it doesn't mean that's what we're going to stay with, but I just want you to hear the difference between yeah. the two. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's, let's 86 them again, and then we're going to try some diffusion, if we have it available. Well, there are these ones here that he, um, you could set them on something. 
Um, if you get close, it's not bad in the shell. By the way, we anyway. are, are listening to the Octave Records okay, Audio File right. Masters. And this is number three. So just in case you're wondering what we're hearing. Because we're playing it a lot. So <laughs> let me just see what we got. What do we got here? This is getting more absorption in the low end, and this is just diffraction on the high end here. A little bit, yeah. I mean, it's not a ton of diffraction, but I think having something there would be good. But it's, you know, you, you can experiment with that yeah, and see what yeah. you think as far as spaciousness versus, you know, um, the tonality of the system and stuff. Is this a compilation or one artist? This is one artist. Isn't that a great piano solo, though? Yeah, it is. But there's something going on in the background. Yes. Way, way, way I mean, I actually, to be honest, probably 95% of systems couldn't resolve <laughs> that little so, something that's going in the back yeah, with yeah. The, the drummer and the bass. You can hear it. You can yeah, hear yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh -huh. You can hear a little of the snare. Yeah. Exactly. And then the, the bass guy is just a little pluck. But yeah, isn't that amazing? Is, is this the tune you want? Sounds really great. <laughs> and and what was happening with other speak? Uh, no, that's okay. Other speakers, uh, you wouldn't get that inrush of air, the blat, the, oh, the, no, the splat going on. Yeah. Or it would get too muddy. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I've always liked planers. But even then, they had a hard time kind of moving that whole diaphragm. This is this is like the best of both worlds. Yeah. What you're doing is getting the the attack. Mm -hmm. And and the definition mm -hmm. with it, it's it's fast it's right. it's there. <laughs> listen, you can for, hear all the air. Listen for like thirty seconds more, and I want you to hear the symbols. Oh, this. okay. This, this right. recording is that. just no. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I totally agree with you, but it's it's. That's the, the thing that kills me about this. It just it sounds like cymbals, yeah, as it's opposed to tweeters. Really, percussive instruments are the are yeah. everything's hard. Yeah. We we tend to I don't know if it's human nature or whatever. When it comes to the vocal and the mid range, is we 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 sort of put our own information in. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to um, purely percussive instruments, they're the I think they're hardest to reproduce because you you usually don't hear the attack, you don't hear the decay. You just get this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah or, this or, is or all open get, up. Or you, or you get, or you get, that. or get symbols that rip your head off. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's the part that I just <laughs> drives me bananas. Yeah. Mass is um, really good. It, so you you can see that we haven't really done a whole lot to your speakers. I mean, we've just made some pretty minor changes to them. Yeah, that's key. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's in, I'm just gonna do a quick measure here. Uh huh. Yeah. We, um, just because what I always found the. Sp Sweet spot off wall was, you know, roughly here. Yeah, okay. the middle of the speaker is where 
is where my magna planers ended up. Okay, so, so it's, we're really it's not, sort of like not too even yeah. we're not too far from where not the too far Maggie's from where were. it was before. Yeah, we had them way back, and part of that was yeah, due of course, to cables. Maggie's are more because they're dipoles. They're more yeah. sensitive to, you know, the, the 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 front wall. You know, one thing benefit of something like a Maggie was dipoles. They don't make as much bass, but um, they they excite the room a little less. There's about four point eight dB less room interaction because of the knolls they have in, exactly. on the side of them. So sometimes um, monopole speakers like this can be a little more challenging in a small room for bass, but I'm hearing really good bass actually. It's not, yeah. uh, we haven't listened to stuff with a lot of ultra deep bass, but it's sounding quite balanced at least. Mm -hmm. um, because we're in a small room and small rooms are problematic typically for bass. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, and I get a lot of people asking, these speakers are big, so can we put them in a small room? And well, one of the answers to that is the size of the speaker, unless it's ridiculous, doesn't really matter according right. to the size of the room. I, the, I was reticent to, to actually go forward with the loudspeaker, yeah. uh, either that it was a, a long wait and I was <laughs> wondering you know, do that. Because I thought the speaker just literally would be too large for the room. Yeah. And uh, Chris and others said, no, if you've got at least eight foot you know, distance between them and mm -hmm. what have you, it, it should work fine. And I'm going, oh, but I've tried other things and big speakers, small speakers here. And, and um, some would, you know, couple too much and everything would get muddy mm -hmm. uh, or, or what have you. But these are very, uh, um, even without adjustment, I found them getting rid of some of what I thought were room problems. Mm -hmm. But what is happening is the dipoles were exciting the room uh, in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And um, and so these, and, these fixed these, that. Yeah, they fixed that, and which, yeah, is, which is great. Which is all good. <laughs> great. What, what size is your room? Um, 10 by, it's 10 wide, 14 long, okay. but it's an open door in the back, which mm -hmm. gives you that effect of having a larger room. And we have this uh, once was closet um, uh, with mm -hmm. the electronics in it, which I've actually thought of just walling this off, walling that off, put it in Rockwell insulation or Cohen's mm -hmm. 703 insulation and make him uh, bass traps. But mm -hmm. my bass is good. I don't, I don't think know. I have Your to bass anymore. Is good. I'm good. I I'm sold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know that I'd mess around with it a lot. Let's... I don't I don't think so. I'm not yeah. if because I used to be able with the dipole speakers walk you know, literally walk into that yeah. and it'd be, be like, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. the coffin mm -hmm. effect. Uh, but mm -hmm. I I'm not I'm not hearing that. Why? Um, let's. I want to go back to uh, flying blind off the clandestine. Uh, that's just track seven. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's easy. Don't have to. The, do the imaging is a lot better than it was when we started. You know, oh the, yeah. The sort of spaciousness and yep and, and depth and, there. And yeah. most of that came from just pulling it out. Pulling out the just, speaker did that. Yeah. I think yeah. more. Yep. More than anything. It, it looks a little more intimidating to have them close to you, but it actually does. They disappear more than they they were. Yeah. 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 That's exactly right. Yeah. Let's see what we got. Let's, uh, can we pull that out of there and mm -hmm. let's just see what happens. Uh, what would you like to pull up? He, we're just going to pull the, the trap in the back. Mm -hmm. at the, that, I guess it's an ASC, is it? Or is that your it's copy? A, it's a, it's, yeah. a it's DIY my ASC. reverse engineered. Yeah. yeah. I, can, I can grab <laughs> one of them here. These turn I'm out just curious. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Okay. I think that's a lot better. You know, what'd you think? Um, they're excellent. Um, I've long waited for the speaker, as many of us had, and uh, heard some iterations at Expona and other places. Oh, so you heard yeah. the earlier ones? Oh, yes. Actually, two how, versions of that. How cool. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And they sounded pretty good. I thought the, the mid-range uh, response was particularly nice, but mm -hmm. you're in a large room with 30 people, 
and it's, it wasn't ideal conditions, but it sounded very good. Um, but what I'm hearing over the last week and what I'm also hearing today is just a, a, a it's just a different speaker. It's just <laughs> far beyond what that prototype was. Um, imaging is better, base is tighter. It's just, particularly the base and the mid-range are just superlative. Um, I, I, as you know, I've uh, been lo a planar fan for a very long time, yeah. and as you have. Oh, yeah. I've, and I've uh, we've owned Acoustats and Magna yep. Planers and mm -hmm. Quads and all the rest, and could never give up that good mid-range. But what was always lacking is the frequency response way on top, mm -hmm. and in particular, the mid-bass and the bass. There just wasn't that punch there. Yep. Um, again, I think uh, magnet planers and other speakers give you very good bass, yeah. but they're missing an octave mm -hmm. on the bottom, mm -hmm. at least. Yeah. And I'm not a bass nut, um, but I've always wanted that. But when I would try other loudspeakers, um, conventional designs, B&Ws, uh, so forth, um, they would give you some of that visceral impact down there. Mm -hmm. But two things happened. It just wasn't as good in the mid and top. And what I always found with um, speakers with driver components in particular without planer is they were not seamless. Mm -hmm. And I wanted something when I'm listening to it, I'm not hearing the box, mm -hmm. I'm not hearing a crossover point, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not hearing three different mm -hmm. uh, uh, diaphragms or, or, or woofer or tweeter components doing a particular thing. So. Um, I gave up a lot and lived with a very inexpensive loudspeaker for many years uh, in the Magnapan uh, 1.7i's because it gave me most of what I wanted, yeah. most of the frequency range and, and all the rest. But um, this is the, what I would call a have your cake and eat it too loudspeaker. Um, it was able to give me everything that I wanted. Um, it drew, drew, Drew down on my bank account. That's the only negative. <laughs> uh, right. But um, yeah. it's given me the low end. Um, I've heard ported speakers. This doesn't mm. sound like a port. It yeah. uh, doesn't seem to have that kind of uh, uh, that uh, uh, in, uh, interference, if you will, to yeah. it. Yeah. And um, my biggest fear in this whole episode was that I've tried different dynamic and uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, quasi designs mm -hmm. in this environment. Yeah. And I would hear room notes, or there'd be problems with yeah, low end. Well, your and, room is, and mid -bass. Like, is not ideal. We're underground. We're in a basement. I don't know if we'd mentioned that. Yeah. Um, it's not ideal, um, other than being very quiet. It is nice and quiet. So, yeah. uh, and I'd always get those problems. Even with a dipole speaker, I'd have imaging problems, but I wouldn't have the bass problems. So it's always a give and take. Mm -hmm. So. I've not found with this loudspeaker any type of compromise in working in the room. It's not perfect, meaning the room is not perfect, um, and I'll keep moving them around. And these yeah. guys, by the way, did a great job. Mm -hmm. uh, it sounds better. They pulled it up from the wall a little bit, towed them in. Uh, Chris is a genius. He's got great ears, too, mm -hmm. and it was able to fine-tune um, the speaker even more. Plus, he plays bass, so he had to know what is all about. It was, it was very self-indulgent. Yeah. I was listening to my own playing on these things. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, well, that's, you know then you better than anybody what it sounded like, right? Then you ought to know. Yeah. 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 All yeah. we need is a cellist in but here, and then we would make it work. I know. Yeah. With any component change, whether it be at speaker to cable to fuses, and you guys know what I mean about all those little tweaks in between, um, this was the first time I sat something down, and I sat myself down, and I couldn't come up with uh, issues with it. I just kept listening more to the music than to the equipment to see is it right or it's wrong. Should I move this? Should I move that? So um, it was kind of revelatory for me because uh, I'm a jaded audiophile. And we've all done our share of <laughs> component listening oh, and, sure. and putting in different tweaks. But this, this was totally unusual in that I couldn't really bear fault to anything per se. And now I know I got to upgrade all my stuff even more, maybe to, to match the loudspeaker. So <laughs> oh, it's the good. endless, it is oh, an good. endless thing. So well, well, yeah, thank, sorry. thank you, Greg. Um, just, just real quick, let's see. Oh, we'll try in, in 30 yeah. words or less. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, how was the delivery experience? Because as you know, we're trying to do something that really hasn't been done before, you know, right. with, with speakers like this and then their smaller brothers that are coming. We're sending them out 
through a special delivery service, which as you pointed out, it was kind of like furniture movers right. that come down and take care of it for you. How was that experience? Was that Well, it was really uh, easy f for me. Uh, again, we're in a basement, so the two handlers were very courteous and uh, understanding that they had um, uh, potentially a fragile, fragile piece in, 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 yeah. in the box. And there are four boxes. They bought them down, and it take, took minutes and uh, slid them around. So that that experience was good. It really was. It wasn't. Uh, that was a fear of mine as well because I've taken loudspeakers in the past where it's a two man job and uh, a real difficult time. Um, the the stand is already integral to the to the the speaker already. This thing clipped in with, with a ball bearing and guide mechanism that was just slicker than slick. <laughs> The fit and the finish of the product is really good. Uh, I mean, you could use a car analogy there, but um, you can tell they used a lot of lacquer and a lot of care <laughs> and um, made the speaker really, really look good. And uh, um, I, I will always uh, look to a product that if usually the, the fit and the finish is right and then often the, the engineering follows or yeah. vice versa. And it's, it's a total package. It's really a good, good sounding, good looking speaker. All right. Well, thank you, Greg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What a pleasure. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. My pleasure. It's fun having you guys here. Yeah. yeah. Now I got to put my room back. <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't have to do much. It, it turned out really well. I know. We we pulled up to Greg's house, and I was telling Chris, this kind of feels like that publisher's giveaway. You know, we went with the <laughs> right. like, Hey, you just won two million dollars. Here we are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. well, all right. Thank you. This is great. And. Uh, you and I need to go to what, Missouri? That's All right, we're going to Missouri next. So we'll see you in a minute.